All right. What's up, everybody on Facebook? If you want to join us in the Zoom room live, hit the uh, link down below. Uh, if you want to ask me questions, we'll do a little Q&A at the end. Uh, and in this training, we're going over Systems 101, what has ultimately uh, provided more freedom, uh, more money, and more impact in my business more than anything else. Um, it, is, uh, it is Systems. So we'll hop into that today. Demystify, demystify systems and go through the whole training with you. Um, and Amanda, I'm gonna hit record once we officially start. Um, thank you. Um, along the way, uh, if you have any questions, drop them down below, we'll do a Q&A at the end. Uh, again, these trainings are only available for the next 24 hours because they're going inside of our seven figure CEO program. And I just wanna do these live with you guys to provide value. Uh, so take copious notes, like I said on the last training, uh, the shortest pencil retains more than the longest memory. Um, and it's a great opportunity for you guys to start crushing your systems. Um, we've been doing this for the past three years, um, built a multi-million dollar coaching business. And um, I, I can tell you, we've been through uh, so many different ways to create systems. And this has been the simplest way uh, to create systems and getting people to actually perform the tasks that you actually want them to perform. Uh, so we'll hop into that. We got Kim Dang joining us here. So if you're on the live, uh, say hey um, and join us inside of the Zoom room. Um, I would love to know everybody that's here, uh, what is your number one struggle when it comes to uh, creating systems um, or uh, anything around systems? What's the number one issue? What comes to mind when I say systems? Let me know in the chat. We'll get into the training shortly here. I just need to let everybody in. Boom. Dana, let's go, baby. Along the way, uh, if you're a coach consultant, want to be a coach consultant, uh, want to learn more about our programs, hashtag seven figure CEO down below. Um, Amanda will shoot you over uh, some more information and we'll book a call uh, with you uh, if you see fit and uh, we can jam out about the programs, how they might be able to help you scale faster uh, and more sustainably and bring more money and freedom and impact uh, to your life. Um, and we have some questions coming in, uh, having people think on their own when adjustments need to be made. Absolutely love it. And I'm gonna open up Facebook here, see who's on the live. If you're on the live, say, hey. All right. Sweet, sweet, sweet. This will be a fairly quick training, I believe. Um, so if you have questions along the way, drop them down below. I'll get them all answered at the end. And I'm actually going to record this. So I'm going to run through this training um, and then we can do Q&A at the end. So let me make sure that we're recording. All right. Boom. All right, systems 101. So the problem that you might be experiencing right now is that you're confused by systems and how to create them in the simplest matter leading you to days and weeks of anxiety and wondering when you're going to actually scale. So the promise of this training is that I'll help you just uh, demystify uh, what systems are and how you can create them. So you, as the CEO, can achieve more money, more freedom and more impact in your business. So the process, the five things that we're gonna go over in this training is number one, the difference between a system and a process. Uh, then the seven core systems of a business machine. Then we're going to hop into the uh, efficient and effective process creation process and why you should stop creating SOPs. You heard that right. Stop creating SOPs. Um, then we're going to hop into how to monitor the efficiency of your systems. And as a bonus, I'm throwing in the only two ways 
you can delegate. We're gonna be talking about those two ways. So let's hop into it. The difference between a system and a process. Um, a system is the overall thing or core element that you're looking to have or implement in your business that accomplishes a desired outcome. It's a thing that helps your business run. So a system is a collection of processes, tools, checklists, flowcharts, and people. And the processes are the things that you do in order to make any given system work most efficiently. And the core word here is efficiently. We're looking to create efficient processes and always optimizing our processes so they're the most efficient. So processes, simply a collection of tasks to accomplish a certain, uh, a certain outcome, right? And then what I want you to note here is there are three types of tasks or uh, tasks happen on three different basis. So the first thing is an ads needs basis. So if you think of a task as such as like onboarding a new client, you have certain tasks that you do that only happen when you're onboarding a new client. So that's on an ads needs basis. Then you have reoccurring tasks. So this can be a part of a, uh, a role in your business that somebody is doing either daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, it just happens every single uh, day, week, month, quarter, year, whatever it is. So you can think of this as, um, as uh, posting in the Facebook group every single day, right? Something like that. Um, then one-off basis task. This is purchasing a tool or something like that that you're only gonna have to do once, don't need a document, don't need to know how to purchase a certain tool over and over and over again, right? So what are the seven core systems of a business machine? So you've probably already seen this, um, attract, convert, deliver. This is client facing. This is how uh, you're getting more attention and attracting people into your world. Um, systems in converting those uh, prospects into sales and then delivering for those prospects, right? Or for those clients now. But there are actually four other systems that you need to focus on in your uh, business scaling journey, which is a cash system, system systems, uh, people systems, and um, innovation system. And we're going to hop right into that. So your marketing system or your attract system, your primary objective here is to bring new leads interested in the company's offering, bringing new leads in. That is the main objective of the system. So underneath the system, there are certain processes that will allow you to bring more leads in. So these processes might be uh, new paid ad advertising campaigns, uh, weekly email marketing, posting in Facebook groups, joint ventures, things like that, that bring more leads in. Then you have your sales system. And the primary objective of the sales system is to turn a portion of those prospects into customers. And some example processes here are confirming the appointment, preparing for the appointment, uh, the sales calls, sales script, uh, triage calls, a triage script, um, setting uh, uh, from the Facebook group, setting from LinkedIn, different areas where you're actually converting those prospects into sales. Then you have your delivery system and the primary objective of your delivery system is to fulfill on the promise of your product or service for the customer and generate upsells, referrals, and testimonials. A lot of people leave off the upsells, referrals, and testimonials. But this is how you make your machine cyclical, right? This is how you maximize customer lifetime value. It's by delivering on the promise, creating raving fans, getting more upsells, referrals, and testimonials to generate more income for your business. So examples of some processes that are in the delivery system can be onboarding clients, fulfilling for clients, upselling to clients, uh, getting referrals from clients, uh, and getting testimonials from clients, right? And then you have your finances, your cash system. The primary objective of this system is to ensure that the money promised by the customer is collected, right? So um, example processes here are collecting overdue payments, uh, uh, tracking payments, uh, or going to collections. 
those sorts of things. So ensuring that you are collecting the money that uh, the customer has promised. Then you have your operation system. And the primary objective of your operation system is to oversee the optimization and improvement of processes so each department works as efficiently as possible. So you have all of these systems and the core responsibility of the operation system is to make them as efficient as possible, right? So uh, example processes here, uh, planning processes, uh, project creation processes, system creation processes, which we're going through, uh, delegation processes, data uh, tracking, data creation processes, that sort of stuff. And then you have your hiring system or people system. Your primary objective here is to recruit the top talent to create and run these systems inside of your company. So example processes here, sourcing applicants, selecting candidates, um, hiring new team members, onboarding new team members, uh, training new team members, those sorts of things. So before we hop into uh, the innovate system, I want to go back up to the top here and show you how this all works together. So each of these are a system with an individual outcome, right? Attract or marketing, getting more leads, um, more prospects, um, convert or sales, converting those leads, right? Or prospects, and then delivery, um, delivering on the promise and getting more upsells, referrals and advocating. Cash is the machine that allows your uh, business to run. So making sure that you're collecting the cash, which is promised. Your systems uh, system uh, allows you to run each department or each system as efficiently as possible. And there are people running those systems. So you need a system for sourcing um, and hiring and training those people to run your systems, right? So then once you have that, all along the way, as your business is growing, you want to move more into the innovation system or the CEO system. And the primary objective here is to maximize revenue and profit through innovative strategies, right? So some example processes here is how you're setting up strategic partnerships, how you're creating your vision for your business, how you're optimizing it, um, or how you're creating new offers uh, in order to run that system. So those are the seven core business machine systems. Then we wanna hop into um, uh, the efficient and effective process creation process. And this is, and we're gonna hop into why you should stop creating SOPs. So let me know if you've ever experienced this. Um, you haven't even started creating SOPs because you tell yourself, uh, I don't have any systems or processes in my business. So I actually went through this. I hired an operations manager uh, to help me create processes in my business when I was in my first year in business. And I literally couldn't even tell him what the step-by-step -step process was to generate a new lead. I, I didn't know how to get it out of my head. And I was like, there is no process, there is no system. But I can assure you, you are going through a process um, when you're doing these things. And I'll show you how to get it out of your head in just a second here. Um, or maybe you start creating an SOP or documenting a process, then you get interrupted and add it to the graveyard of half finished SOPs that never get used. That has happened to me a lot. I used to have a Google Sheet filled with half done SOPs that were never used and never complete. Um, or maybe you took, a pain, you took painstaking hours, maybe even days or weeks to create an SOP and your employees ignored it, just doing things their own way. That happened so many times to me where I would create a beautiful uh, SOP written document and they would just completely ignore it and do things their own way. And it wasted tons of time, tons of energy, um, and tons of resources. And um, it's just, that is a waste in your business, right? Or maybe you created the world's most beautiful SOP, 
just to find out months or even weeks later that's irrelevant to your business operations. But in fact, uh, you already have the systems and processes in your head. Uh, you have uh, tried writing down everything in sequential order and the human brain just has a difficult time at concentrating on how, what do I do step by step by step by step and writing all of that down. And you could have just uh, video processed the process while you completed those tasks and your processes are changing constantly. So that's what we're gonna hop into next, which is what is the better way from here? Well, instead of creating SOPs that everybody talks about, start creating video processes. So why should you create video processes? Well, number one, video processes are easy to create. Number two, uh, you can do the process while you create the video processes. And number three, you can, um, uh, updating the process is as easy as creating a new video, either for you or somebody on your team. So we're gonna hop into right now how to create these video processes. So the first thing that you wanna do is identify the department you need to systemize first. And usually this comes down to your biggest bottleneck, right? So if we go back up to this graphic here, you wanna ask yourself, where is the biggest bottleneck in my business right now? Where am I losing cash flow? right? So that might be, I don't have enough people uh, in my audience, or I'm not getting in front of enough people and generating enough leads, or it might be our sales suck. We're just converting at 10% and we need to have a more efficient sales process, or it might be our clients aren't getting results and we're not getting any referrals and uh, we don't have an upsell or anything like that. So it might be in delivery. So it's probably in one of those three initially. And then um, as you scale, you might want to look at, is it a cash, uh, cash system issue? Is it a system sy system issue or bottleneck? Or is it a people uh, hiring bottleneck that we're currently experiencing, right? And you want to identify that bottleneck first. And then from there, you are the person that owns that system, wants to identify the processes needed to be recorded, right? So for example, with delivery, you have an onboarding process, you have fulfillment process, you have an upsell process, you have a referral process, you have testimonial process. So for this example, we're gonna go into the onboarding process. So once you've identified that process, um, the next time you do this process or the person uh, who owns the system is doing this process, for example, um, onboards a new client and simply record each stage um, or each step in that process using a screen recording software. So us as a business, we use Loom, um, but you can use any screen recording software that you want. Um, <clears throat> So this should say board. Create a board inside of your project management software. We use Asana um, and label it with the appropriate title. Then step number five is if the process includes multiple people, have each person record their individual tasks. Then step number six is if an individual task needs to be um, updated along the way, which they regularly do, simply create a new video um, the next time you're doing that task or the person on your team is doing that task. And what a process really needs is somebody who owns it, a who, a what, the videos, a why, the purpose, and a when to start and mark complete that process. So <clears throat> one thing, uh, this is a little sidebar for the people that are on this live. One thing that our clients absolutely love is we actually show you the inside of our business. So what we're gonna hop into now is our onboarding process for seven figure CEO clients. And if you look in here, um, there are multiple people that are involved in the onboarding process. If it's just you, totally okay, but you need to uh, record it first and then you can start delegating these things to people on your team. So with the onboarding process, it starts with sales, then it goes into internal onboarding, right? 
So underneath each of these um, tasks, we have a video recording of how that task is done. It's not written out like crazy. We don't have like an elaborate SOP that needs to be changed all the time. We have a video that people actually watch to accomplish that task. And if there's something missed in that video, then we just create a new video to and plug it back in to optimize that process, right? So then from here, you've created the board that says onboarding for whatever, um, <clears throat> whatever program it is. And uh, then if you have a team, um, you either have them create the video or you create the video and then label who is in charge, who owns this task. So now for us during the onboarding process, all we have to do is click here duplicate this project, put in the client name, and this is a part of the process. So let's say it's Adam Smith, create a project. We go down here. It starts auto-populating and inside of this process, what the VA or, or delivery VA is trained to do, and it, there's a video inside of this process already, is they assign the due date and the person to the process. So let's say Paul's our delivery VA, um, and then they put the due date in and the person who's responsible. So that way, um, there's no anxiety on like where things are at in the process. You as the CEO can hop in here and know exactly where things are at. If things are overdue, let's say this was due on the 9th, you'll see that in red, right? So now all of your processes are documented in video format. You know exactly where they're at. Um, and you don't have to create this elaborate written SOP that you're banging your head against a wall, right? So that is the video creation process. Now, some processes are easier to document than others. So what I recommend is starting, if you haven't documented your onboarding process, start with that. That's typically one of the most linear processes that you can create inside of your business starting out, right? So how to monitor the efficiency of your systems. So this is how I think about um, implementing systems, accomplishing systems and monitoring systems. So you need to set an outcome. And you as CEO set the outcomes that you want for your business, right? And then as you start building a team, as you have a leadership team, all of that, your leadership team sets the outcomes for each of their departments or each of those systems. Then you want to document the processes, implement them and optimize the processes of each system to achieve the outcome. This is done by all employees inside of the processes inside of whatever your project management system. And then whatever is mo what's monitored is managed. So you need to monitor each of your systems through tracking systems. And we have a separate video on that. Um, there's a link to it at the bottom of uh, this document. So just click that. That's already done. Um, and then at this point, you have your outcomes, you have your processes, and you have your tracking in place. Now you get to ask your, yourself the question, if the outcomes aren't being hit, you can ask yourself, is it a person problem? Is it a process problem? Or is it a systemic problem? And then you identify what the problem is and you fix that problem, whether it's person, process, or the system as a whole, right? <clears throat> The bonus here, the only two things um, you can delegate are tasks and thinking. So with tasks, these are typically things that are being delegated to your employees um, and you do it first and then they do it. And these are the hands inside of your business. Tasks are usually just delegated to the hands. You can also delegate to your leadership team. They might be involved in some tasks, those sorts of things. And in terms of hiring employees, they're cheaper than your leadership team because um, thinking tasks need to be delegated to somebody who can actually run that system or that department. This is your leadership team. 
And one thing, um, I got this from uh, a course I was going through. I, I wish I could give credit, but I forget the name. Um, but the example of give me a six inch putt. So going to somebody on my leadership team saying, hey, this is the outcome that I want. Do you agree with it? Yes, awesome. Come back to me with a strategy for a six inch putt. Meaning that um, I can give a simple yes or no, you've laid out the strategy. So this is the brains in your business. So you've got brains and hands and delegating tasks and thinking. And we have a separate training on how to build out your, your brains and hands. Um, and that's uh, linked down below as well. Um, and this is your brains of your business. Somebody in charge of operations, somebody in charge of marketing, somebody in charge of sales, somebody in charge of delivery and the brains and the strategy between behind each of those departments. So action from here, once you've gone through this video, identify the core system that is your current bottleneck, create a process inside of that system, create a tracking system for that system, just click the link um, below and grab uh, that training and watch the delegation trainings to improve your delegation, uh, delegation skills so you can get out of more of these tasks. So that's it for this training. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in the next one. All right, I'm gonna pause that recording and we're good to go. Cool. So that was a training that's going inside of Seven Figure CEO. Um, and uh, yeah, if you wanna talk more about Seven Figure CEO or Authority Accelerator and get access to all of these trainings and our coaches and our support and all of that, just hashtag Seven Figure CEO down below uh, and we'll reach out to you with more info. Um, but now I am all yours for any questions uh, that you guys have. Um, and by the way, I mentioned this at the beginning, these are trainings that are going inside of our programs. Uh, we're not providing the documents or the recordings, um, but the recordings will be up for the next 24 hours. So feel free uh, to take copious notes um, on those uh, bad boys. So Billy, uh, I will be soon. You already know, I love it, dude. Can't wait to uh, support you in scaling your business. Love it. But yeah, all yours for questions. That was a quicker training than the last one. Um, uh, Amanda, did you see any questions come in? Um, no, only a question about um, getting access to the doc, which you've answered multiple times. Cool. cool. King, had a, uh, King said, having people think on their own when adjustments need to be made. Um, that's a, so King was saying that was his core issue with systems. Um, so uh, the concept of a six inch putt is fantastic um, for helping people make their own decisions and creating their own systems or their own processes. So um, that's what I do with my team is like, this is the outcome that I want uh, uh, come back to me with a six inch putt and like start building up this process of the system. And that will allow for more trust um, inside of your business. When you say, hey, this is the outcome. I believe you can do it. Go get it, right? <clears throat> Hire the brain to take care of the hands. Yes, 100%. Um, so you got your leadership team and then you got people underneath your leadership team. Uh, we have trainings inside of Seven Figure CEO on um, <clears throat> on the process. Oh, actually we're doing a live training here on Thursday on building out your team. So there's actually a, a systematic way in hiring and who you should hire first and how you should build out your team. Um, because you obviously can't just have a team of brains and no hands, uh, and you can't have a team of all hands and no brains. Um, so there's actually a systematic way of doing it. And we're, uh, we're doing that training, I believe Thursday. Uh, we got Rick over here. What would you say to someone who's working nine to five job and wants to start a business? Rick, I would say check out the last video that we did. It's up for uh, the next 24 hours, the seven figure CEO roadmap. Um, it's inside of the Facebook group for the next 24 hours. Um, and I go over everything that you need to focus on uh, from zero to 10K. And if you want to go fat, uh, 10K per month, 
If you want to go faster, join the Authority Accelerator program. We've helped so many people quit their jobs um, and build a six-figure business. Uh, and then people have scaled to seven figures. Um, Habib, uh, great training, Andrew. How do we have access to the document? This is going to be a recurring question. Uh, so these are these are trainings that are going inside of our paid programs. Um, so the training will be up for the next 24 hours. Um, but uh, so take copious notes. Um, but the documents and the the video are not provided here. Cool, cool, cool. So what questions do you have around systems? Usually it's just like one question and then they all pop off. So. Amanda, what questions do you have? Here we go. Um, I have a question around who, how do you know who to delegate what to? Um, cool. I, I was in an offer at one point and um, it was just me. And mm -hmm. so, and so like, how do you know, like who to hire, how to delegate, how to train them, all that jazz? Yeah, good question. Um, so this, this kind of brings up um, a, a recent thing. I had a, a client reach out and said, uh, I need to hire a VA. Um, and uh, you, you don't need to hire a VA. You need to be very intentional on why you're hiring somebody who is a virtual assistant. So the very first step in um, the hiring process is creating a job scorecard and ide identifying what uh, tasks that person, will, what they're gonna be uh, responsible for, right? And what KPIs they're gonna be res responsible for and all of that. Um, and from there, you can go through the hiring process. When you're doing your very first hire, I recommend doing a time audit. So chunk up your day in 20 minute segments and write down what you're doing each day and identify what you're doing that you don't need to be doing at that moment. Um, <clears throat> so for example, uh, customer service, there might be somebody that can come in an executive assistant that can help you out with customer service and eliminate those headaches of clients asking, Hey, where's this link? Where's that link? Or, um, or, uh, things around payment and they can help you with that. Right. Um, so there are tasks, uh, doing tasks, there are deciding tasks, uh, there are, uh, delegating tasks and there are designing tasks. Right. So what I want to do is move more towards um, the designing my business instead of doing in my business. So I'm getting more and more doing tasks off my plate and moving more and more towards designing, designing an overall uh, function of the business. Um, <clears throat> and then with the training and all of that, it's much longer answer and it's inside of our seven figure CEO program. Cool. I would love for you guys to share what's the number one thing that stuck out to you? What was your number one takeaway from the training? I'll just scroll through the document. Boom. So we talked about the differences between a system and a process. We talked about seven core systems of a business machine. Um, we talked about the objectives and processes that can go into each uh, system. And then we talked about uh, the efficient and effective process creation process. And then we talked about how to monitor the efficiency of your systems. And then we talked about tasks and thinking. The only two ways to delegate. Jackie says, use video and then it's easy uh, for the SOP to develop um, living document. What is monitored is managed, love it. Yeah, I document everything. If you learn anything from this training, it's document everything that you're doing. When you're reaching out to that next pros prospect, like 
turn on Loom, uh, record yourself, talk yourself through the, the process, and you can start delegating that stuff, right? Document everything. Cool. Amanda, I don't see any other questions. So I think we're gonna hop off here. Appreciate you guys for being here. Again, we have trainings that are going into our seven figure CEO program going on at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Um, every, wait, is it 2 p.m. or is it, I'm all off now. Is this 1, 1 p.m.? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> so 11 p.m. and 1 p.m. PST. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and uh, uh, I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for being here. Jackie says, I'm looking forward to joining Authority Accelerator. Love it. Can't wait. Um, is the document you just showed in training I just logged on. Got to <laughs> mention it one more time. Um, oh, it's 11 a.m. and uh, 1 p.m. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday. You guys will get a notification for it. Um, and the document is not provided uh, through uh, the um, video here. Uh, it's going to be added to our seven-figure CEO program. Uh, and um, if you guys want to join, let us know. Uh, if you guys want to talk about it, let us know. Mickey, thanks for being here. Kim, thanks for being here. Nikos, love your face, man. Jackie, Joshua, Thomas, Justin, thank you guys. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.